Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. One of the very first things many new photographers are told, especially those uh, aspiring landscape photographers, is that in order to create the, I guess the, the cleanest and uh, highest quality images as possible, you must always use ISO 100 and only deviate from this value in emergency situations when there is absolutely no other choice. And the reason I know this is because I, I was one of those beginner photographers that was locked at ISO 100 for years and would literally have a, a full-on panic attack at the sheer thought of steering away from this tried and true methodology of selecting proper camera settings. But one thing that gets completely lost most of the time during this, this ISO discussion has to do with the other problems that can be solved by simply increasing your ISO. Seems that most of the time, this discussion is predicated on obtaining clean and noise-free photographs, which instills fear in the minds of many when it comes to increasing this value. But there's a lot more to it than that. And in this video, I wanna share with you my take on this topic and why I often shoot with higher ISOs. But I do have a very quick question for you. Do you say ISO or do you say ISO? Leave me a comment below and let me know which camp you're in. It seems that there are two types of folks in this world. Those that say ISO and those that say ISO. So to jump right into it, most of the time, well, whenever I'm making videos, a lot of times when they're on location videos and someone happens to see the back of my camera and it'll say ISO 640 or ISO 1600, sometimes ISO 3200. And I get comments pretty frequently with people asking, you know, Mark, why are you shooting with such a high ISO level? You're, you're shooting in the broad daylight. You're not shooting astrophotography or the Milky Way or anything like that. What's with the high ISO? And, and the short answer is most of the time, it has to do with obtaining a very specific shutter speed for a certain situation. And, and that's what I'm gonna cover in this video is the three scenarios where I'm really looking for a very specific uh, type of camera setting, um, I guess triage or pyramid, if you will. And I need to bump up that ISO to create that. So the very first scenario has to do with photographing trees. I live very close to the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina, and I love photographing trees and trees have branches. And these branches most of the time have leaves. And unless it's completely still outside, which it random or it very seldom is, those leaves are gonna be blowing around a little bit. And here's a good example of this scenario right here. This is an image from, a, from Zion National Park a couple years ago. Actually, I'm sorry, this is last year. And if you zoom all the way in, you can see that all of these leaves are absolutely tack sharp. And in order for me to obtain a shutter speed fast enough to get these leaves this fat or to get these leaves this sharp, I had to use ISO 640 because it was just a little bit of wind. It wasn't like a, a hurricane or gale force wind or anything like that. It was just enough breeze. And oftentimes I'm shooting in the, the golden hours in the early morning light or on the, the late evening light where there's not a ton of sunlight out there. It's not like you're shooting at high noon. So in order to get a fast enough shutter speed and a reasonably exposed photograph, I have to bump up that ISO level. So just a, a real quick clarifying point here. The reason I like to lean on ISO as opposed to aperture in this scenario is that aperture has a more, I guess, meaningful and could have a very significant change to your overall photograph where ISO is kind of lower impact. So if you go from say F16 to F8, really opening up your aperture, yeah, you're allowing more light into your camera, but you're also completely altering the overall depth of field of your photograph, which is going to completely change the look of it, as opposed to going from ISO 100 to ISO 640 or maybe 800 or maybe 1600, that's gonna have a very, very low impact to your overall photograph. You might have a little bit of additional noise if you really, really pixel peep and, and ISO values well above 1600, but for the most part, it's gonna have very, very little impact, negative impact to your, to your overall photograph. So that is why I lean on ISO as opposed to just opening up your aperture as wide as it can go in some scenarios. Here is another example here. This is from my recent trip to uh, Colorado just a couple months ago. Once again, if you zoom all the way in here, you'll notice that these leaves are absolutely tack sharp. And if you watch that on location video where this image was captured, you'll know that there was a little bit of wind blowing in and out. This was shot, as you can tell, the sun was rising right through here. This is maybe 30 or 40 minutes after the sun rose. So there wasn't a ton of ambient light. So in order to get that fast enough shutter speed, I had to bump up that ISO level. So that seems to be a scenario that I encounter all the time. And what, when it's really, really important is when you have vegetation or leaves extremely close to your camera, like right through here, if these were all blurry and all blown around and everything, it would look one like mush 
And two, it would really serve as a distraction. But to have a fast enough shutter speed to capture everything in this scene perfectly, perfectly crisp is very, very important. So that is probably one of the, the number one scenarios where I bump up my ISO level from that 100. And like I mentioned before, when I was a beginner, I, I heard so much talk about ISO 100, ISO 100, it's always gotta be 100. If you go to 200, if you double that, your image is gonna completely fall apart, it's gonna be completely noisy, and it's just gonna be a complete mess. And I remember really contemplating like, oh my gosh, should I, I need more light you know, to get the specific shutter speed. Should I go from 100 to 200? I remember thinking about it, is it even worth doing that? Should I just fix it in post? But in reality, cameras today are so good, you can easily shoot at ISO 100, 200, 400, uh, 640, 1600, it doesn't matter. They're gonna come, you're gonna be able to come away with an extremely clean looking photograph. And if you don't believe me, I would highly encourage you to just run a test in your backyard. You know, just create, find some inanimate object, a tree, or put something on a fence post and take a couple images. You know, put your camera on a tripod and take a couple variations. Take an image at 400, take an image at ISO 640, 1600, 3200, and all the way up. And then review those photographs just to see where your threshold is from what you deem a reasonably clean photograph with the camera that you're using. And if you know that the camera that you're using looks perfect at ISO 3200, now you know how high you can go and uh, feel comfortable doing that. So that's a very good exercise to go through. I do it with uh, just about all of my cameras just to see how well it handles uh, noise and grain created by bumping up that ISO. Now here's an example here where it's not super, super important. You know, once again, this is, uh, you know, obviously there's a ton of trees in this photograph, but the trees are far enough away to where it doesn't, it's not super critical if they, if the leaves are blowing around at all. And as you can tell here, they're probably, these leaves probably are blowing around. This is a little bit of a longer exposure and there was a slight breeze that day. So I'm pretty certain that all of these leaves through here are not tack sharp. But since these trees are so far away from the camera, you really can't tell the difference. So that scenario, it's not super, super critical. So understanding how close trees or how close anything that's moving in your scene is from your camera is wildly, wildly important. Now here is another example right here where these leaves are far enough away. And once again, this is a longer exposure. You can tell that it was very kind of, you know, ominous stormy skies right through here. So there was a, the, the amount of ambient light was definitely on the lower side. So I had to drag out that shutter speed to create that, that you know, well exposed photograph. But these trees are far enough away from my camera to where you really wouldn't be able to tell if these leaves are blowing around it or not. And I can assure you, you def they definitely were because there was a storm coming in and there was plenty of wind blowing around these leaves. So understanding exactly where the leaves are in your scene, and maybe there isn't any leaves, like in this scene right here, definitely a, a woodland scene, but this tree has no leaves on it. And I mean, I guess there's some branches right there, but that is not enough to where you could, uh, I should say that area in the background is slightly out of focus. So you really wouldn't even be able to tell if those leaves are blowing around or not. So it's really not that big of a deal. So whenever you're photographing woodland area or trees or anything like that, that is probably one of the number one scenarios where I will bump up that ISO level because I'm trying to get a fast enough shutter speed in order to create those perfectly sharp leaves in the image. But if the leaves aren't close enough to your camera to where you could really even tell the difference, it is not quite as critical. Now, one of the other main reasons is whenever I'm photographing moving water, which I absolutely love to do. Here's a great example of this from Bass Harbor Lighthouse. This was uh, during high tide, lots of incredible wave action here, crashing waves. Whenever I see big waves, dynamic motion, I always think of a faster shutter speed because I want to show that power. I want to show that ferocity of the water. And what better way to do that than with a faster shutter speed? But as you can tell, this is just a few moments before the sunset. There obviously is not going to be a ton of light in order for me to get a fast enough shutter speed. And if I had my ISO at 100, you can imagine how dark this exposure would have been. But in order to get a fast enough shutter speed to freeze the action in this water, I had to bump the ISO level up to, I believe, 1600 with this particular image, which was perfectly fine because, the, you know, at ISO 1600, this was with the, uh, the Fuji, actually this camera right here, the X-T4, there was absolutely no grain, no noise, nothing. Even, even if you zoom into insane pixel peeping levels, you are probably still not gonna be able to see any noise. 
But that is a very common uh, scenario when I have to bump up my ISO is because I'm trying to get a fast enough shutter speed. Here's another good example here where there, this is a, in a, a kind of a, a valley or a canyon, if you will, and there's very, very little light that gets in here, especially in the early morning hours. So in order to properly expose this photograph and not have to do a, you know, a one minute long exposure because all of this water would have looked like complete mush, it would have lost all that detail. I wanted to speed up that shutter speed to around, I think, 1 25th of a second and bump up that ISO level to create that reasonably exposed photograph. And I was still able to get all these nice striations in the water up through here, which I absolutely love when I'm photographing waterfalls. I love all of these little detail here. But the only way to get that is to use not a super long shutter speed, not a super fast shutter speed. You gotta get something kind of in the middle there. But when there's not a lot of ambient light, you'll probably have to bump up that ISO level to create that more balanced exposure. And here's a, another great example of this from West Virginia. Once again, there's just not a lot of light that gets down in here into this little valley. This is photographed in the morning. And in order to get this shutter speed that I wanted, as you can tell, this is not a, you know, a, a one thousandth of a second shutter speed. There's definitely motion in this water here. But you can also tell that it's not a, a, a two second shutter speed as well because there's still a ton of detail in this water, which I absolutely love. So in order to do that, to get that shutter speed that I wanted and create that balanced exposure, I had to bump up that ISO level in order to do that. And this is one of my favorite fall images I've ever captured from, from quite a few years ago. But a lot of the times, that is what I'm trying to do when I'm bumping up my, my ISO to those higher levels. And when I say higher levels, it usually is somewhere between 640 and 1600. And it's usually just to get a desired shutter speed to photograph, you know, to, to freeze the action in blowing leaves or to get a very specific shutter speed to show detail in the water and not create, you know, detail less water and not to freeze the action in the water. So in summary, those two instances, it's always to obtain a very specific shutter speed and create that balanced exposure. Now, the other reason is whenever I am hand holding, hand holding an image. Now, image, IBIS, in-body image stabilization, uh, optical image stabilization in lenses today is absolutely fantastic. And you can really get away with hand holding slower shutter speeds more now than possibly ever. But there is still scenarios where, especially if you're photographing in dimmer light, golden hour in the, you know, the early morning hours, later evening hours, when you're gonna have to bump up that ISO level again. This is an image from, uh, from uh, last week's video. And I mentioned in the video that this was a handheld shot. I was only able to capture two of these of this photograph. The very first one was completely, it wasn't completely out of focus, but it definitely was not in focus. And you could tell that it was camera shape because I was at ISO 100. I bumped that up to ISO 1600 and was able to greatly increase my shutter speed. And that in combination with the in-body image stabilization of my GFX 100S, gave me the ability to create that tack sharp photograph. And this is that version right here. So photographing handheld is a very, very common scenario where you'll probably have to bump up your ISO unless you're photographing, you know, at high noon on a cloudless day and there's just an insane amount of light available for you to work with. Here's another quick image that uh, I should say a quick grab. Only captured one version of this. The light was just hitting these, uh, these uh, what are these, pinnacles, these rock structures. In, uh, in Utah, it only lasted a couple of moments, but I wanted to, to grab it. I didn't have time to set up my tripod and get my ball head and everything perfectly aligned. So I just had, did a, a very quick handheld shot, but I bumped up that ISO level to 1600 and was able to capture this. And when we zoom into it, you can tell that it is actually, I don't know, it's, it's pretty sharp. You know, if you zoom out, you definitely can't tell that uh, it's a soft at all. It might look a little bit soft, but if I were to try and capture that at ISO 100 with a much longer shutter speed, that this image would definitely have never come out. And then one more image from uh, my trip to Iceland last year of the, the, the famous church. And this was just a very quick grab, you know, but once again, not a ton of light, storms rolling in, had to bump up that ISO just a little bit, I think to 640 in order to capture this photograph. But this right here is absolutely tack sharp. And that is only because I was able to speed up that shutter speed by increasing that ISO and still being able to come away with a reasonably well exposed photograph. So those are the three reasons why I often shoot with a higher ISO. One, in order to create a fast enough shutter speed for uh, to, to freeze any type of blowing leaves or blowing branches in trees. 
The other is to, to obtain a specific shutter speed for moving water. And a lot of times that moving water a waterfall is surrounded by blowing leaves and, and trees, which is a very common scenario in my home state in North Carolina. A lot of the, the waterfalls here are always in valleys and it's surrounded by woodland area. So that's a pretty common scenario as well. And then the third reason is whenever I'm hand holding a shot, being able to, to capture or being able to speed up that shutter speed enough to alleviate any type of camera movement. So those are the three reasons why I, I, you might see me often shooting at ISO 640 or 1600 in videos. And from my experience, I never have any noise in any of these photographs. Every once in a while, if I have to go up to ISO 3200 or maybe ISO 6400, and you really, really zoom into the deep shadows of a photograph, you can start to pick out some noise. But normal people, non-photographers, they don't look at photographs like that. No one's gonna zoom into the shadows of your, your image and be like, mm, I see a little bit of noise in here, two thumbs down for that photograph. Nobody really cares and cameras today handle ISO and noise. Absolutely incredible. So I would not hesitate at all to bump up your ISO level in order to get a desired shutter speed to help with, with whatever scenario you might have um, or might be encountering. Um, I hope you, uh, I hope that information was helpful. Uh, before I do wrap up this week's video though, I just want to say a huge thanks to the longtime sponsor of the channel, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog posts and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I do hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you have any questions about any of this, please leave those in the comment section below. And, and, and please leave me a comment also as to whether or not you fall in the camp of ISO or ISO. It's a very contentious debate. I sometimes flip it around in videos and uh, the, uh, the, the backlash or the comments or the critiques I get is just off the charts. So people are pretty passionate about whether you say ISO or ISO. So let me know what camp you're in regarding that. And um, if you did enjoy this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed already, share the video with your friends or your family or your local photo club if you enjoyed it that much. I really would appreciate it. And as always, thank you so much for carving out a little bit of time and spending it with me here today. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.